Hi, everybody. All right, I'm trying to get the best lighting in here. Let's see. Oh. Hi, everybody. For those of you joining me live, there we go. I am going to go live with Al. She is absolutely fantastic. And here she comes. I'm waiting for her to join us live. Tamson, you there? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good. I don't want to have a video of you. Just I know. I don't know what's going on. Huh. Here okay. We go. There we go. Awesome. So, hi. Oh, my God. You look so gorgeous. Good to see you. You too. You too. So You look so gorgeous. Aww. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It has been a whirlwind and so much of a whirlwind. We have run out of stock. They're being restocked, but people are struggling to find the book. <laughs> um, Amazon went out. Oh my out of gosh, I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy. Bigger retailers ran out of stock. We still have it in Canada. So, uh, and in the UK, um, okay. And Barnes and Noble still has it. But anyway, if you're just joining, hi, I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I am a board certified OBGYN and I have tonight so excited with me. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, Tamson Fidel. I'm out of New York. I'm a journalist here and I'm and a huge fan of yours, but excited to, you know, really be part of this, this conversation because, uh, I don't think we can talk about it enough right now until we stop using words like normalize and taboo to describe it. And right. I think that you have, you know, uh, shown us in so many ways, there's ways to not just survive it, but thrive through it. And I think exactly. that's what's so exciting. Exactly. And tell them, I often see you advocate. I mean, you're constantly on your um, TikTok and Instagram, really busy sharing your own personal story. Tell us a little more about yourselves because my viewers know me. Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm based out of New York, and I've been in, um, I've been doing the the local news here for about 15 years, and been in news for I don't I can't even count anymore. It's gotten to a point where I can't count anymore. Um, but you know, I had my own menopause experience when I was on the air. It was 10:30 one night, and I um, I've been having some problems with the teleprompter, like seeing a word and not not being able to remember what the word was or, or I knew it was familiar, but couldn't process it. And since I've learned so many other women have had such, you know, very similar experiences and um, it got to be around 1030 and we were in a commercial break and I could just feel, you know, the furnace got turned on and, um, and I, my heart was just racing out of control. And I thought I'm either going to throw up, I'm going to pass out. I'm going to fall off the stool that we're on and we're going to be on live television. So I'm not, I can't do that. And I said out loud, cause I was in a studio of men. If I fall over, somebody catch me kind of half joking. Cause I, I didn't even know what I was going through and a little just nervous about it. And, um, one of the, the sportscaster had the foresight to go, you know what, you need to get off that stool and you need to get, you know, walk out of the studio. And so he walked me out and I walked me in the bathroom and I just like, just collapsed onto the floor and laid there. Like, I remember staring at the toilet thinking, what, what is, what is happening to me? Is this a heart attack? Is this, what is it? And, um, and that was when I went into a, a you know, I, they got me to a car. I went home, like I seemed to regroup and I thought, what, what was that? Like they would just didn't, I just felt so off. And I got really the most, what I got most worried about was what was going on with my head because my job is to read a teleprompter. So wor words scroll by me all day long. And if I can't do that, then I thought like, well, what, am, what can I do? And, um, and so I went into a deep dive and I, I went from one doctor to another. I finally, I did some blood tests. I had one doctor say, uh, in menopause, any questions in my patient portal. And I, I had tons of questions. I lost my mother to breast cancer when I was younger. And so, um, I was very scared of doctors in general, in right. particular estrogen. I had zero information about um, HRT. And so here we are today after a lot of research and a lot of understanding. I'm um, a year and a half, you know, out of kind of feeling like myself again, quite frankly, or maybe even a better version. Um, and meeting incredible people like you along the way. 
your story is so similar to so many women that I've talked to, you know, who were absolutely blindsided by what was happening to them. I mean, they all knew that they would go through menopause one day, but for them, it was like, well, my periods will stop and I might have a couple of hot sure. flashes and that's it, you know, and just the stories of all of the symptoms that might happen, everything from musculoskeletal to neurological with the brain fog and, you know, thinking you're going through dement, you know, early dementia and, you know, the palpitations, the chest pain, sure. sweating, the skin, the hair, the bones, the teeth, the dental changes. I mean, we're just really now getting, cracking the, the, you know, cracking the egg, you know, getting into the yolk of what this is really about and what, you know, we can do about it. Um, so, um, and if anybody has any questions for Tamsin, just drop them in the comments below. I'm um, okay. So th this woman saying I was fortunate. I sailed through menopause 55 um, going on 12 with the occasional hot flash. So yes, yeah, some of you, probably about 15% of people will go through their menopause journey and really not have any significant symptoms. And that could be kind of the trifecta of really good genetics. And you were already, you know, really your nutrition was on point mm -hmm. and you didn't have any other health issues that were contributing. You know, you had, you didn't have visceral fat or, or any of the other things. So, but just to remember that independent of your symptoms, your menopause is going to put you at higher risk for certain disease states, you know, hypertension, diabetes, stroke. So if mm -hmm. we took two identical twins and the only thing different with them was one went through menopause at 45 and one went through at 55, 10 years apart. The woman who went through at 45 is going to have a much higher risk of hypertension, cardiovascular disease, stroke, neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia, diabetes, um, as well as osteoporosis, genital urinary syndrome of menopause, which includes vaginal dryness, pain with intercourse, you know, recurrent UTIs, bladder dropping, bladder leaking, all of that, you know, has to do with menopause and like knowing what might happen, knowing how to address the symptoms, knowing what treatment options are available for you, I think is going to save a lot of women some unnecessary, you know, I think just knowing that this might happen and that you're ready if you start having the symptoms and right. immediately can launch into a plan on how to combat this and live your best life, I think is going to go a long way. And we're just not doing that for women right now. You know, the message is muddled. You're getting different information. From I, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more with you. And I, and I feel like, um, I feel like, my job as a media person is to, is to keep talking about it because I don't remember us ever talking about this in the media. I mean, as a, sorry, I want to make sure this, um, this connection is okay. I, I feel like as a media person, it's, it's, you know, in part our responsibility to be talking about this because it's not, I don't remember ever using the word menopause on television in my 20 plus years of being on TV. And I, so I, I think it's incumbent, you know, I think it's incumbent upon me to do that. I think it's important. I, I don't have children of my own, but I think it's important that I pass that along for the next generation. And I think that's what got me started. And, you know, between you and I, uh, I was scared to talk about it because I didn't know how I was going to be perceived at work, you know, right. Because we lost her for a quick second. Okay. Let's see. Um, there's definitely more information for us now, but not in the Latin community. So women of color are struggling more, you know, um, just, I was answering a few questions. You, oh, yeah. you know, I think it's especially um, challenging for women of color as well. Um, access to medical care, you know, access to information, um, you know, they are suffering just as much as women, you know, as Caucasian women with the lack of like intergenerational information. And, you know, a lot of the old wives tales, you know, that's just cross cultural, you know, right. every walk of life has their own like, menopause story and none of it is good. <laughs> none of it is really all that helpful. Um, so um, let's see the average age of menopause. Thank you for asking. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is one of my most common questions that I get. And um, this may surprise you guys. The average age of menopause is 51 menopause defined as you haven't had a period for a year. 
Okay. Basically symbolizing the loss of estrogen production from your ovaries. You're no longer cyclically, you know, ovulating and the ovaries have shut down. They're never coming back. Okay. However, under that normal curve is 45 to 55. So you need to be prepared beginning at age 45 to be completely menopausal. Now, it may, you may be on the other end of the spectrum 10 years later, but 45 is still considered to be within the normal range. Perimenopause, which is the beginning of the decline of estrogen production from your ovaries, can begin 7 to 10 years before that. So this whole process starts somewhere between 35 to 45. And what I hear from you guys reporting back from your healthcare provider and what I may have even said out of my own mouth before I got educated was to my patients was you are too young categorically dismissing a patient's symptoms without thinking about it, dismissing her as you're just too young. You're only 38. This can't be happening to you. That is wrong. And if I, if anyone watching was one of my former patients, I apologize from the top of my heart. I should have known better and I'm never going to make that mistake again. And I'm telling everyone who will listen to me, <laughs> so, you are not too young. You are not too young to be perimenopausal at least age 35, you know, and the, yes, you don't have to yep. wait period stops to begin a discussion of treatment in perimenopause. You know, it's interesting. I, I'm working on a documentary about this, and I have so many young women that have that have come to me that have come through it either surgically, uh, you know, or or they're experiencing yeah. symptoms already, mm -hmm. right? And it's and it really is, it, and and they're surprised by it. And I have to tell you, like I, even though I was 47. I had no idea because I never, because my mother had breast cancer when I was young and she was in this period of, um, she was 44 when she was mm -hmm. diagnosed with breast cancer. We didn't know if it was the, you know, I guess she came through surgical menopause and, you know, and she passed. And so I never had a chance to talk to her about it, but I realized that it, it was never part of my vernacular. It was never something in my thinking about, I thought 50 menopause, 55 menopause, I'll feel hot and I'll move through my life because I can handle anything. I had, I had just no idea. And it's, I tell stories all day long. I hear people's stories all day long. And this is the one story that, you know, seems to be the most important out of anything, it turns out. Well, a third of, you know, part of this is, you know, why we are, you know, I'm writing a new book on like the medical aspects of menopause. Yeah. Okay, right. And how do we get here? You know, how do I we know. get where a third of the, of the, you know, female gender in, you know, with ovaries mm -hmm. is somewhere in their menopausal journey. Okay. And this has been since the continuum. This has been since time, you know, <laughs> sure. and actually it's been a while. <laughs> menopause. We died in our forties, you know, a hundred years ago. Right. And so, and when you look at how much funding is spent. So when you go to, PubMed, which is where I do medical research when I look for evidence-based, you know, things to, you know, make, make inferences. And you just put in the word pregnancy. There's like one, 1 1.5 million articles come up since the beginning of them tracking articles written, research articles written on pregnancy. That's great. Pregnancy is important. We need research in pregnancy. Of course. Okay. When you type in menopause, I think it's 1.1 million. Let me, let me take that back. It's 1.1 million. When you type in the word menopause and just how many articles come up that have the word menopause in it, it's 94,000. It's about 10 to one. And that holds that exact ratio holds in the last 10 years. Okay. So we are it, doing, it's so stunning. It's so stunning to me. More women will go through menopause than be pregnant. And so then okay. you have, mindset of a lot of the healthcare community who is like, well, there's nothing we can do. It's a natural process. I'm like, just because something is natural does not mean that it doesn't cause suffering or is not pathologic. And the newest thought leaders in the menopause space are pointing to the fact that menopause is a risk factor for certain disease states. And if mm -hmm. we intervene, we can decrease your risk for certain diseases such mm -hmm. as dementia and heart disease. The number one killer of women is heart disease. So this is the conversation I have with my patients. So a lot of people are like, do I need hormone therapy? I'm like, look, you need the conversation. You need the option. You need to know what your risk benefits and potential, you know, look at you as an individual sure. want. Okay. Is what's going to keep you up at night? What's bothering you? What do you want for the next 20 years? Then you decide. And if you decide hormones are not for you, I a hundred percent support you. 
Okay. Cause you, you heard all the data, you know, the risks, but to categorically walk into someone's office and say, I don't believe it's not Santa Claus right. in hormone, right. you know, I just think that that's malpractice or you should not advertise that you do menopause care. Right. Right. You know, I agree with you completely. And I, you know, it's interesting though. I wasn't offered that initially. That was never something that I was offered initially. I was told that that's where I was. I was. And then I wound up going into that deep dive and it's really why I came out talking about it first on TikTok, and then, you know, moved over to Instagram and, and really uh, I couldn't believe the community of women that, I mean, I, I felt very alone, like so many other ones. And I kept hearing the same story over and over. And, and as a journalist, I, I'm like, how could, how can this, how can this be, where has this been? And I don't know if, I mean, you've been doing this for such a long time. And by the way, you know, I'm from Houston. So Galveston is a place that I would, I would go to every spring break. So I'm very familiar with it. So I was excited. <laughs> I was like, Galveston diet, Galveston, like my Galveston. Here, Galveston. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, but, but I will say it, it just felt like, it was nowhere. And now I'm thankful. Now, I don't think it's everywhere yet, but I think finally we're seeing one or two or three and you know how it is. You, you know, you start talking about it in your feed and you see it, you see it in a lot of places, but the truth of the matter is, is that there are still a lot of women that, that don't talk about it, don't want to talk about it. I had a conversation with actually a friend not, not too long ago. And she said, with the whole menopause thing, it's kind of a dirty word. And I said, no, you, you can't say that as a woman. You can't say that as anybody. You, ha you have to be out there in front, if not for yourself, for your daughter, for your granddaughter, for a, a friend of yours. And so that's why I think that, um, you know, it's important to come out talking about it. And, you know, you know the diet that, that you have and you, you give people, you know, and I was so excited to get my book, but you really, um, you talk to us. And I think that that's what's so important and make it feel very hopeful. And that is really important because the women that I hear from don't always have that. They don't have a doctor like you in their backyard. They don't have a doc. And even if they are living in a city where, you know, they, they have their share of whoever to go to, they don't know where to go to find exactly. a doctor who will have the conversation. And then when they do, not all doctors have the time to have it. I mean, I have patients or I have just people reach out to me because of social who have yeah. access who have the finances and the background sure. to have the best medical care in the world for any other condition. Yep. But when it comes to menopause, they are, are just like, I cannot find, you know, so mm -hmm. they're like, can you please help me? I'm like, you have to come yep. to tell where my license is. <laughs> so, <laughs> and Galveston is fun. Galveston is fun. So, um, the book is, um, out of stock on Amazon, um, but they're has the book it. ever been out of stock on Amazon? Um, it so when I've you never go, heard of it before. I know I've never heard of a book about it being out of stock on Amazon. It's amazing. I, I don't. <laughs> my agent says that she's never seen this happen. So, you know, they're shipping more. They created more. They printed more, and they're shipping them right now. So hopefully everything will be back. But right now it's available. Wow. Available, but you know, one thing I would have done different. Um, Tamsin is not call it a diet, you know, in medicine, a diet is a, a way of eating. It's a pattern, right? It's not are right. you on a diet? It's what is your diet? And so, you know, I named it for my patients and then it, it kind of grew its own legs and took off running and I chased it for four years. And so, you know, the name stuck, but gosh, and it gets such a bad rap in, in the toxic diet world. And so, but, you know, just, just to let people who've never heard of this, this is not, a quick weight loss program. This is the right. story of menopause as it relates to nutrition <laughs> and, and, and lifestyle. And I, you know what, I, I got to tell you as somebody that interviews a lot of people and there, there are, you know, different books out there for different kind of eating programs or nutrition programs or lifestyle programs. Uh, I don't think of it like that. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but I, I really think that there's so much more to it. There's so much more, um, all, all parts of it that I don't, I don't think of it as it, it shouldn't get a bad rap for that. I, I really do think that makes it just clear. So people know what they're going after. You know, if you're going after a cookbook, it'd be a cookbook, be, you know, so, so you've made it very clear what it is. And I, and I think what it does is it covers all aspects of, you know, of what you want to see quickly. Like the, the, you know, one of the big issues and, and one of the ones that I dealt with, um, was, you know, was, body fat and belly fat and arm mm -hmm. fat and, and eating the same way that I was eating before and having all different results and working out the same. So I really have had to change a lot of what I do. And I, and I, um, and I was excited to see some of the things that I was doing right. And some of the things that I really needed to course correct a bit. And it's important to have a guide. And that's what I think that is. So, you know, I, I wouldn't worry about the brand of, 
of it, but it's a guide. And that's what I think that, uh, that obviously people see because I've never heard of something selling out on Amazon. Like Amazon doesn't sell out of things. So <laughs> hopefully they got, um, they were had a thousand on back order. I'm just like, okay. and it, I, they, they, my publisher is telling me by the weekend, they'll have another several thousand and good to go. But, yeah. um, people are pretty, good. they were, were, you know, Barnes and Noble has it. They were getting it on books a million, like Target sold yeah. out, Walmart sold out. I couldn't believe it. Like, what did, did, they did you do the audio version of it too? Someone's asking well, The about audio, that. of course, did is available. I did, great. and I read the audio, if you can stand listening to this voice for nine hours or whatever. <laughs> and I love listening to it. Well, but a lot of people like to highlight and underline and, you know, uh, and have the, you know, we have the recipes and meal guides in the back. So they like to have those Wonderful. in front. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm going to turn the table on you for a second and ask yeah. you, because yeah. I know you've talked about this um, publicly, but I think it's important to note, you're a, you're a physician, you're a doctor, you're somebody that has had years and years and years of school and continues to educate yourself. And even when you hit, I guess, perimenopause and menopause, you were kind of taken aback by the symptoms, correct? Well, because that's what you talk about. Yeah. So for me, like I, my mom had really bad hot flashes and I just mm -hmm. remember like my mom's menopause, um, being this, um, dark place. Like she'd go yeah. in the room at the door and it was menopause and would be whispered and, 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 um, my mom stayed on hormones. She didn't care about the WHI. They made her life so much better. And mm -hmm. he stayed on them until in her seventies, I think, um, had a very understanding doctor and, Good. uh, and she was willing, you know, even with what they thought were the risks back then she had had a hysterectomy, so she didn't need the progesterone. So her risk for breast cancer was almost nothing. And, yeah. um, her just quality of life was so much better. So yeah. I went through, it kind of like, I got off birth control pills. I was on birth control pills to treat polycystic ovarian syndrome and to not be pregnant. And uh, my husband had offered graciously to get a vasectomy, but I was like, you know, I have to stay on this medicine for my condition anyway. Just right. for and uh, and both my kids were fertility babies, so we would have welcomed a surprise baby. Never happened. Sure, sure. And um, so I get off the pill. My brother, my brother had died in 2015. Gets really, really ill. And then I end up doing his hospice care and he dies and I go through this, you know, grief and depression all while I'm menopausal. So it took me a second to realize, I just thought I was grieving, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. the lack of sleep and the, and the just hot all the time and irritable and cranky. And then I was having horrific hip pain, like bad. And finally, when the grief lifted and I was like, okay, wait, you know, what is this belly? And I realized, I knew I had gained weight, but I was like, this sure. guy out of nowhere. And then I was struggling to try to get it off, which is why I started all the research on the nutrition part of it. I could not get the weight off. I could not mm -hmm. get my under control, you know, and finally I like felt like I was like failing to call my practitioner to say, okay, yeah, I'm going to have to give me these hormones. I'm not going to make it, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Since that time, all of the research and the new stuff that's come out that I was actually, thank God I did that because I've dramatically improved my, decreased my risk of cardiovascular, you know, disease and mm -hmm. neurodegenerative disease. And, uh, man, I mean, it was like three weeks and I got my life back as far yeah. as how, what sleep, my hip pain, it took the turmeric and some yoga, you know, I had to hit that from multiple, sure. but, um, God, I can't even remember the last time I hit to hurt, you know, and it was like, it's, an un it's, un it's really incredible. It's like the light comes back on. And I, I remember I, like I went to and I was like, wait, yeah, this yeah. is horrible. And I'm, the, I'm, I'm a nice person. Like, I'm like, not trying to be dramatic here. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I can handle things. You know, I, I think my fear was really what was going on with in my head. And it, it wasn't even so much, oh, I can't find my keys. It was really the, the reading really um, scared me. It really scared me that I would see a word that I recognized and I could not, I could not process it. Like it didn't matter. And then what that would do was scare me. And then that would remove my confidence. So then I would come and I would go to work and I'd feel not confident about what I was supposed to be doing every day. Right. Mm -hmm. And that lack of confidence really wears on you after a yeah. while. And it, and it caused me to feel really, really depressed. And I, um, because I wasn't sure who I was going to go to. And I, you know, I did this deep dive into my own research and try to figure out uh, different ways to do it without HRT and finally ended up with a doctor who I just, I I'm so grateful to, and, um, made me feel, um, maybe understand, 
made me understand what was going on. And that, and I think that that's the most important thing. And I feel like that that's where I come kind of into the journey of really that educational part, right. Of understanding and then relaying the news out there because it's what I should be doing as, a, as somebody in the media. And um, when I went on, you know, HRT, I was, I will tell you, I, I was scared. It sat, sat in my cabinet for a little while. I wasn't sure what to do. And I kept looking, I'm like, okay, maybe next week, maybe, I mean, it was very, it was a very um it took a lot for me to make the decision because I didn't have the knowledge, you know? And, um, and once I finally did, and I realized that I, I got, I got my life back. I mean, I, I was newly married at 50. I got married at 50 years old. So I was like the menopausal bride. <laughs> so I felt like I got to get myself together. And so, uh, you know, it really has been a game changer for me. And, and I know that, you know, there's certain people that cannot do that. And there's certain other, you know, ways to go about lifestyle changes. But for me, that was the, the journey that I, that I took on. And I feel like, um, I got a lot of my confidence back as a result of that. And yeah. just kind of a result in, of, of having the information too, right. Of understanding there's a community out there and understanding you're not alone. And that's, those are the kind of the areas that we want to get into, right. Is the areas of people feeling like they're, they're alone or they're invisible. Like so much of the feedback on the book was, I, I like, thank you for the nutrition tips, but Sure. You have made me realize that I'm okay. Like I'm yeah. going to be okay, you know, and no one in my life and my medical, you know, sp stewardship has done that for me. They've just right. right. normal, suck it up. You got to deal with it. And I'm here to say, no, you don't. And it's not okay. Aging is normal. Suffering is not. Yeah. And I want, I want to talk about the Galveston I for one more second, because you, you started this, you, you didn't write, set out to be like, I'm going to write a book. No, they, they came to you. <laughs> you set out putting a program together for you first, for the me. women that you work with next. And then that, that's what happened. And I think that that's really important to note because, uh, I mean, you, you, you had, you, I remember you telling me the story when you came on my podcast that you were like handing out papers, right? Like handing yeah. out things. Like that. I'm pointing to the, there's an office depot. Right. <laughs> I would go and copies of my little plan and just hand them out to my patients and then the nurse, my coworkers and yeah. the staff and everybody wanted it. And then they're all like doing, making little recipes together and, you know, having weigh-ins on the patient yeah. scale work. And um, it was, you know, and it just took, had a life of its own. Then I took it to social media and said, Hey, anybody want to try my little plan? And it just exploded. Right. Came up with the online program ended up, you know, with a hundred thousand students and then, um, random house came knocking. Let's write a book. Wow. Oh, wow. Well, I'm, I'm so excited for you. You know, I, I told you the first time I saw you on TikTok cause I'd come on here. I was kind of creeping into TikTok a little afraid cause I thought I don't want anyone at work to hear me talking about menopause yet. And so, so this is, I came here cause nobody was, it wasn't a lot of people on here from, you know, from work or from my personal life. And I came on talking about it. And I remember the first video I did was listing 34 symptoms. That's all I did. I was like, so, you know, here's what's going on with me. And then I found out about this and that thing went, went, it was unbelievable. And it would kept getting shared. And I went, huh, I guess there's people talking about. It. And so I, I just remember thinking, wow, I am not the only one out there. And then when I saw you and <laughs> talking about it, I went, wait a minute is this the Galveston I know? And who is this talking about Galveston? So I was really excited to, to find you and to be educated by you. And um, I'm so, I'm so happy. So many tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands. I don't know how much it takes to sell out on Amazon, but uh, that many people, but where are the other places to find the book too? Because that's important. So, and we'll make sure we share it too. Right now, like probably by this weekend, Amazon will have it back. And, perfect. Perfect. Uh, this right now it's still available on Barnes and Noble. Actually, Great. yesterday we were of all books for sale, all of them. We were number two. Oh and my gosh, number two. I'm on, so happy for you because I know what you have done. Yeah, I was I, like, <laughs> you know, what? No, no, you're still you still see patients and everything, don't yeah. you? Where do you get? Where I, do you find the time? I'm always intrigued by people's <laughs> stories. You know, I open my dream clinic. I have a okay. menopause focus clinic and I just take care of women wherever they are on their journey. I have now, I don't deliver babies. I don't do surgery or any kind okay. of supplement or traditional exam. I'm just there to talk about your menopause toolkit and how we're going to get you through the next 30 years. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. possible. And so because of that, I don't have call. I don't have weekends. You know, I okay. spend an hour with each patient. I'm able to formulate a really comprehensive plan with them. And so I see about six patients a day, okay. new patients. 
and a few follow-ups and stuff. And, um, and so it's just a really relaxed environment. It's just a beautiful way to practice medicine. I feel like I'm doing so much good in the world. And uh, I just do it two to three days a week. And then the rest of That's the time amazing. on this company. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I see people saying like, how can we duplicate you? And how can we get you here? And how can we, so you know? My clinic is so <laughs> successful. And I have women flying in constantly to come see me. Great. I am now where I'm working on kind of a little training course to teach other practitioners kind of the Mary Claire way on okay. their patients, how I prescribe HRT, you know, how we have the conversation, how I re make the nutritional recommendations. And so we'll be looking for that this year in 2023. I'm so thrilled for you. You deserve all the success. And I, I love what you're doing. I love the book. I was so excited when I got it. I'm like, oh, I can't wait. So I have it highlighted <laughs> sitting there on my bed stand. So, I mean, you really are doing ama amazing, amazing things. And uh, I, I can't wait to see the next book. And I can't wait to see, you know, this conversation. I always look and I think to myself, what's it going to be like in two years or five years? Like how how different is everything going to be in terms of being able to talk about it in terms of, you know, workplace, like I've been working on some different policy for the workplace. I'm excited about that. I just, I feel like there's, there's so much out there and we all have to kind of do our part and, and, you know, and, right. and make the waves and, and, um, and do what we can in our areas. And um, wow, are you doing that? So I'm thank trying. you. Trying. So if you guys don't follow Tamsin, follow her. She has a wealth of information on menopause, really practical solutions, easy ways to talk about menopause, how to share it. You can, I don't know how to do that on a thing, but her, she's right there. I think you can click on her picture and, and give, follow on TikTok. We are still going to go on Insta, right? Yeah, we're like, going to go on Instagram. Does that work? Guys right. want to Instagram. Um, we need more conversations with Drew Barrymore. Um, maybe one day we'll see if I get invited, I will go. I mean, I was on the local NBC affiliate in Boston. Yes. We did a whole cooking show. I'm going to Paris this summer. We're going to be at the American. <sighs> I'm going to LA in March for the next menopause conference. Um, the one you hosted in New York. Yes. 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 Wonderful. Wonderful. I wonderful. I couldn't go to New York cause I was recording the audio book. So, oh, that's okay. That was, that was very important. There's always time. There's always time. Good. I so, can't wait. Maybe I'll, I'll meet you up in LA. Okay. All right. I'll see you over on Instagram. Here and come join us on Instagram.